Welcome to the A Diary of a Wimpy Kid review. I won't make this long. Now right behind me is what I call the literal epitome of childhood nostalgia. This series was everything when I was a kid and it continues to be everything to this day. I, I found it in a dusty old pile near the back of my shelf and I decided to just give it a shot and read it because I was selling a bunch of my other books and these were next in line. I read a couple of the other childhood books I read like Captain Underpants. They ended up being really boring and so I expected the same of this one. But I was pleasantly surprised because this ended up being a fantastic series that still holds up to this day. Now at this point in the series there's about 16 books, a lot of which are just straight up duds, but a lot of which are just absolutely fantastic works of art. We can more or less categorize it as the main four or five depending on what you agree with and then the rest of them, plus some other junk books sprinkled in here and there. As I was reading this story I felt like I connected to my childhood self and I was trying to understand why on earth I enjoyed this in the first place and it struck me. This feels like, instead of a story, it feels like stand-up comedy. It feels like a simple joke. If you're looking for a deep emotional wreckage, you're not going to get it here. What you're going to get is something that will tickle your funny bone. This series truly and honestly reminds me of stand-up comedy today. I'm a big fan of just comedy in general. And so seeing this stuff happen is just such fire to my soul. And I enjoy it so much when people like Jeff Kinney are just able to rattle off jokes like it's nothing and have me actually laughing. This isn't high comedy either, it's functional comedy, which is what I think makes it so awesome. Kenny does not go for a high bar, he does not go for the most complex joke, he doesn't go for a beautiful joke, he goes for what is the funniest joke. And a lot of the time, it really is a really funny joke, it's an unbelievable joke and I can't comprehend how some human could have thought of this. Despite that fact, the majority of jokes are just poop jokes, fart jokes, dumb jokes, physical humor, stuff that would make most people you know, chuckle a little bit, but not really laugh. But it really becomes interesting when these are just the baseline jokes. This is what you expect. And slowly the level of comedy gets slightly elevated on some jokes and lower on other jokes, but eventually it comes to a beautiful crescendo. It also makes me relate to sitcoms in a really weird way, uh, specifically the 90s and early 2000s level of sitcom where the story was not really a priority. And instead we just went on to the interesting jokes and the most interesting hijinks, and that was enough for us. And on some levels, it really does get you a genuine laugh. It's so subversive in so many interesting ways. If you want a general step-by-step -step guide, I can give you something rough right now. The first four or five books are solid. They're very classic, they're very simple. They're guaranteed to be somewhat interesting to you. They take you like, you know, an hour, two max to read. If within the first four or five books you're not interested, you'll know it right away. But on the other hand, if you feel a certain type of energy coming from the comedy that intrigues you, that you find somewhat interesting and subversive, you can continue. There's a certain point within the story where it kind of dips down in quality, and you can see that towards the middle. And eventually it goes on to something of a up and down roller coaster. It never really settles in one place, so each book is either a hit or a miss. I found that the recent book, Big Shot, is actually really, really solid. It's a surprisingly good book. It has amazing subversive ideas, and it feels like it just goes into its own universe. It feels like it doesn't apply to the rest of the books. And just because of that idea, it's so fascinating to see someone who's supposed to be in middle school, just beginning middle school, go through all this nonsense. Now, I don't really have every book here, so I can't actually point it out, but my favorite book within the series is without a doubt, The Meltdown. It is a straightforward story about the idea of winter within this universe. And it just, it's amazing. It's a beautiful, really large scale story that really digs into what exactly makes the series funny. So there's so many funny characters, so many funny situations. The entire situation is comical. The idea of why they even began this is just hilarious. I know that I'm overselling this, but really, it is a fantastic, simple, subversive kid story and it kills me. It kills me. It kills me that so few people are still reading this stuff. This is amazing. It's really, really good. And I'm, I'm so happy that I rediscovered this after so many years. And if you read this in the past, go ahead, start again. It's simple. You can read some stuff online. It's not that bad. You can figure it out. Just give it a shot, especially, especially the meltdown. On the other hand, if you're wondering whether or not to get into this, I would say to you, read the first two books. I think the first book, at least, the first book is foundational to the entire lore of the series. If you can get through that, and then you'll understand whether or not you want to read it or not. And if you're really starting off on it, I, I think it really depends on your humor. The people that I grew up with, the humor has evolved with us. And the humor that I'm enjoying right now is still interesting in those old books. So it's very weird, but I think you have to be, roughly speaking, the same humor as most people my age to understand this. And if you're wondering whether or not to get this for your kid, um, yeah, I think so. I think this is very solid and I think I, I highly recommend. This is one of the funniest series and you know, there's no educational value, but it's a good time. And if that's what you care about, this is a good time. Genuinely speaking, this series is golden and I implore you to enjoy it. It is nothing but the highest caliber, I assure you.
in general, I, I find it hard to rate this series uh, anything lower than a four. It's just fantastic. It's unbelievable that something so old has aged so well and that it's continuing to be put out at such a generally good pace and at, of generally good quality. This stuff hasn't gotten worse. In fact, in some cases, it's gotten a lot better. So look into it if you read it a long time ago or you know you want to get back into it. Then give it a shot. I'm sure that it'll be great. If you enjoyed this review, please uh, hit the like button down below or subscribe if you want to see more reviews. If you check, take a look, you know I review mostly fantasy, so this is out of my depth. Um, but if you enjoy that, you can subscribe. I would love to hear if anyone else has had the same experience as me, is coming back to the story and feeling the same idea, feeling the same beauty and charm that this series has given you all those years ago. I'd love to see more stories like that. And I know there's a small fan base, but you know, is there anybody who's like, actually a normal person that does that is it's not just crazy people right like i'd love to hear from you i'd love to hear your experiences where you think the series dipped and where you think it came back up again and uh for those of you that read it a long time ago let me know if you're interested in reading it again. I, i'd really love to hear from you anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye